a very good afternoon to our revered guest speaker ms divya rang ms divya faculty delegates from different colleges and my fellow colleagues i welcome you all on day 7 of the aict sponsored two week online faculty development program on exploration of nascent pedagogical tools for updating teachers of pharmacy education On Saturday we had a wonderful session by Dr Amrish Chandra on patents where he apprised us the procedure for filing a patent what processes and products can be patentable and what cannot be patentable in all it was a very well explained and informative session moving ahead today we have with us Ms Divya Shangmugarajan senior application scientist life sciences biovia discovery studio altem technologies bangalore Ma'am will be conducting today two technical sessions on pharmacokinetics and dynamic screening of compounds and structure based drug designing followed by a second session on hands on training so i would like to first introduce uh, divya ma'am with everybody uh, currently she is working as a senior application scientist national support for biovia discovery studio altem technologies bangalore she is a gold medalist in mtech in biotechnology satyabhama university She has served as application scientist for Life Sciences Apsara Innovations Bangalore. Ms. Divya has worked in DSIR Lab and Research Foundation for the USA Collaborative Project in Chemo Informatics. She is also the advisor for Bioneem Tech uh, Te Technology Department of Bioinformatics, Women's Biotech Park, Chennai. She has been a trainer for various bioinformatics courses and Accelerus Discovery Studio. Ms Divya has several publications in international journals two book chapters have been published by new york science publishers usa and ncver so we welcome you ma'am and uh, over to you now thank you so much dr shilpa for a great uh, introduction about me it's great pleasure to be with you all at the lyot institute of pharmacy and management thank you and uh, let me take over the session and the session is going to be very informative and then in, uh, people from various background can understand about this way right. so at the end of my session when any how we are going to have an and a session where yes. we can have a discussion and we can clarify your doubts and if you have any doubts feel free to ask me that's what i will always tell the people when i get into a session ask me and we will clarify and then we'll move on thank you right. everyone and yes. let us start the session So very good afternoon to everyone, all the staff, faculties all over our country who have been uh, presented over in a virtual platform of Lyot Institute of Management, especially for the faculty development program. I am Divya here as a senior application scientist from an uh, Altem Technologies Life Sciences for Biovia Discovery Studio. I am today going to present an interesting topic about an uh, pharmacokinetics and dynamic screening of compounds. so any compound that you are synthesizing or you have been isolating from a natural resources what it should it should behave pharmaco it should have an pharmacokinetics and obey the dynamic properties then only we call those hit as a lead compound so why many clinical trials of failing so far because it is not obeying any one of the pharmacokinetics or dynamic properties even though it seems to be potential in your in vitro technique when it moves on to the in vivo there will be problem as lying only in this to majorly i would say that you know to it is the majorly the problem is lying in the pharmacokinetics pka and pkd studies which we call it in a in vitro technique so pharmacokinetics and dynamic properties and moving on once you identify the best lead molecule and we'll be checking out for a uh, structured based drug designing so what is a structured based drug picking designing and how to do this pharmacokinetics and dynamics in uh, using a uh, in which in silico softwares like a biovia like discovery studio that's what i'm going to take you all today and let's walk on along with me and gain knowledge about it what is going to be happen and how we are going for a screening analysis so about your company about uh, altam technologies as a now multiple fingerprints and imprints in the various technology in engineering and it's not only one of the department that we are dealing with life sciences where we are handling a bio that is carbon studio now we are also moving into a 3d bioprinting which is going to exist soon in the market in our country and apart from that you can see that you know, a lot of softwares like the uh, bioprinters and the uh, three msc softwares are also a part of it and uh, accordingly we are being uh, awarded by various awards which you can see in uh, 
left hand side. Let's move on. BioVia Discovery Studio. It's a one, it's a more than a decade software which is playing a major role in the in silico environment. It is not only that we are having a very rich scientific portfolio to tell about our company. So unified lab management, this is a one of the major techniques. Every time when we write uh, something in a paper, when we go to a laboratory, when we want to perform any kind of an assay, what we'll be basically doing, we'll be writing and we'll be taking a reading of for whatever the assay we are trying to do that. Later on, maybe in a one year or two year, the laboratory notebook is going to vanish off and nobody is going to use that. But however, to, to keep the data as a record, Maybe if, if you are going to access even your two decades, that laboratory notebook can able to store it. That's what we call as an electronic laboratory notebook. So this laboratory notebook, you can utilize even in the labs or even in our very big uh, in vitro analysis. Everywhere you can able to use this unified lab management. Moving on, we are more even into a process production and operations and quality and regulatory management where we are having a different unit to take care of your quality and then separate unit to take care of your regulatory and of where they'll be handling and documents for development approval and management purposes and processing to analyze and plan to approve and execute for further analysis and complaints about the trials and taking for and various uh, uh, approval data from an iso like that and finally going for an partnership collaboration with the, uh, any kinds of a laboratory. So this is how they'll be handling the quality and regulatory management. And we are more into a collaborative science. In the collaborative science, right from a sequence, you are going to have a compound or a sequence. We can able to predict the models. That could be if you have sequence, we can predict our uh, well, uh, 3D structure of your protein. If you have your structure or a chemical molecule, we can predict whether this particular molecule could be used for what kind of a disease, how it would behave, what could be a toxicity, what could be an activity. So like this, starting from a chemical problem, you can diversify and you can analyze your various methods of your compound prediction. So that is also feasible, that is feasible to your biomedical discovery studio. So some people, there are few people will be working on macromolecules or a biologics where they'll be interested in developing a therapeutic proteins to solve like a peptide-based drug designing or antibody-based drug designing. So even we have a sophisticated tools to perform this operation where you can come out with the novel therapeutic units. And some people, there are few kind of you know, people, or you could say that the inorganic chemist or you know, people who is working on in uh, metal-based things, who is interested in doing an you know, engineering materials. Say for instance, you want to do a drug delivery using you know, polymers, PHE-based drug delivery, or a tri-polymer, or a tri-polymer-based things, or you wanted a carbon nanotubes-based drug delivery. So if you want interested in this kinds of you know, material-based work that can be handled to you know, Another software is called a material studio, which is also a part of our BioVia discovery studio. And more into in the chemicals and formulations. If you have a series of chemicals in your hand, if you want to develop you know, formulations for that, specifically for a resistant plant or a non-resistant plant, or for some particular bugs, with this, or if you're interested in cosmetic based things, which natural product can be utilized and can be scrutinized to bring the formulations. So all those things we can able to predict. And you can also check whether that particular compound will make you irritant or skin irritancy, or it is going to make an ocular irritancy. So predictively or toxicity model also, we can predict by using our admit protocol that is present in our discovery studio. So this is our overview about our BioVR rich scientific portfolio. Let's move on. Collaborative science, as I told you that we are more into the collaborative science because our BioVR Discovery Studio is a one solution software for computation biology and chemistry, where we have a comprehensive scientific data to analysis. Of course, we have a license predictive analysis, material science predictive analysis, and if you're interested in making a pipeline for your design, 
I not, don't want to use other people's books, but I like to make for my own particular protocol to build a work that is also feasible. We have one more software, it's called Pipeline Pilot, where you can build your components by introducing your scripting languages. You can draw your own conclusion for your own problem. That is science like pipeline design and execution process. And of course, we are also into the collaboration, externalization, and cloud computing, research applications, and chemical inventory management, bioactivity, and clinical resource country. So these are our collaborative science field, or I could say that the various diversifications where we are working on it. And um, getting depth or funneling down into the technique where we'll be dealing with a life sense predictive analysis where we are concentrating more on a biological modeling and simulation, small molecule modeling and simulation, and quantitative structure activity relationship based workbench. So if this, you along this way, like since predictors, we can get in a comprehensive and collaborative modeling and simulation tools or develop the tools for your life science discovering the research. So this is about our software and how we are going to use it. So let us get more into it, get into a topic, how, to, how we can do the pharmacokinetics and dynamic screening for your, any set of the molecules that you have in your hand. We know that drug discovery is not an easy process. So over the 90% of drugs, as I stated in earlier, 90% drugs which enter into the market or fails. When you want to develop an, any drug for a specific drug target or specific disease, averagely it will take around 10 to 15 years to create a new drug. But think about it when a drug fails in any one of the free clinical testing or clinical trials. So whatever the investor, invest, I mean, invested in the particular drug discovery process, will be total of waste of money that will go up somewhere else. In order to overcome or to save your time to accelerate your research, so we have an uh, software like a BioVR Discovery Studio, which will aid you throughout your research. And if you think about it, for the one drug to come into your market, there's almost 170 million that one has to invest to come out the results. So any drug discovery process will always fall into these four categories. So if you have a, for instance, if you have your own protein and don't like, uh, say for instance, I'm very good in identifying a drug targets, maybe I'm concentrating on the EGFGR, estrogen receptor domain, and I know I have a set of ligands or leads or compounds with me. So then you can go for a uh, kind of a drug discovery is called structure based drug designing. Or for instance, if you have your known protein, say for uh, things that you are in a pandemic situation where then you can identify the paucity of proteins for SARS-CoV-2 and what are the new strains are coming, people are trying to develop an extra crystallographic data or a structural prediction and they're depositing in a PDB database, protein structure database. We have this known structures in your hand, but we don't know what lichen or lead could have effectively work on inhibition process. So if you don't know that, we can go ahead for a discovery process called de novo practice. I mean, there is another instance where you have your known, I have set of ligands in my, I'm a medicinal chemist, I am an organic chemist, I know how I have a set of ligands in my hand. I know the path of synthesizing and route of synthesizing, but I don't know where to start, which my molecule will obey for and which activity. Then that, if that is the case, you have to go for a uh, QSAR or a pharmacophore based alignment. And the final instance or case, we could say that I don't know anything, but I still want to perform an operations. Then you have to get into one uh, technique called library design and analyzing diversity. Then you can move into uh, any one of this technique. All these methods of drug designing are interconnected to each other. And if you know one that one particular information, either you have chemical molecule or you have a protein structure, you can tie up the end or make a workflow from a one point to another point. So this is an attract this this designing scenarios that is currently in uh, working for uh, any kinds of uh, computation biology peoples. So taking into a uh, biotechnology drug discovery process, 
discovering that this series will take almost two to 10 years. You can see here almost from zero to 16 years has been expended for this discovery of one particular drug, getting into discovery and preclinical testing and phase one, phase two, phase three, finally moving on to the food drug approval review and post-market testing. So where I can introduce this in silico, where I can save your time, where I can invest my potential time to accelerate the research process. So if you think about it, I could say that in the discovering of your disease and isolating your protein and identifying and lead molecules. So here you can have a two to 10 years, you can reduce a 10 to five folds. When you have efficient in working on this particular tools, you can reduce a five to 10 folds of your uh, time and you can make it a very good execution process of identifying the best lead molecules. So that's what I'm trying to show you today, how to take your, convert your heat molecules or compounds into you know, lead-like molecules. Now drug discovery and tell the friends. So identifying a disease is the most important thing. So clearly it is not feasible that uh, when you want to identify disease, people will have to think about they actually exactly the disease is happening, which protein is causing or which receptor is causing, what is the side effect for that. So in order to know that it almost takes for them to understand about the protein itself will take uh, more than two to five years for that. But however, we are having a small Shoes and then sophisticated databases or data publicly available will now help us to understand about a disease. If you want to work it on cancer, you can understand even the upstream signaling process and downstream signaling process and where exactly your drug target is placed. From that point, you can you can identify that this by stopping this process or inhibiting of this particular reaction. I could come out with enough fruitful results. Then you can frame your work in a such a way that, so what are the downstream signaling proteins are being, uh, being playing a major role in making this process. So you can take those one particular or a common drug target among them and you can identify and you can input your structure-based drug design also. So you, how long do you think it will take uh, your, maybe if you are new to this technique also, learning about this databases and metabolic pathways will not take more than a year. So within one to two years, you can come out or draw the conclusion about your target identification. Then after identifying a target, it is more important to identify your small molecules that should be taken care for your binding analysis or a docking process. So how do we do that? So if you have a set of molecules, don't worry about it. Even we have lots and lots of molecules to be screened that can be effectively done by using a discovery studio. I have a lots of molecules. I want to identify the which molecule will obey like an uh, could be a lead like molecule, or I can take it for a drug candidate. So you can go ahead with the processing with the adiametry properties like adsorption, distribution, metabolism, extraction, toxicity prediction. Then even we have an animal model studies as a part of a discovery studio, where even predict about the lethal dosages and toxicity prediction. And you can also come up, come to know about the, whether this molecule is making a mutagen or non-mutagen. If so, which particular fingerprint is making. So all this type of an analysis, you can able to handle it very easily just while giving a simple clicks in a meaningful manner that is more important. So after identifying your best lead of molecules, then finally you can go for polymer. For the scaling of a process and coming to apply for new drug application and go into an approval, finally into the post -target. So this is how the drug discovery and development will be taking place in in silico as well as So if you take any biochemical class of drug targets, so mostly if you have a drug target that is present in the market, then we fall into one of these categories only. So it could be a receptors, if you mostly either there will be 45 percent of receptors, estrogen receptor, androgen receptor, progesterone receptor, like that there are 45 percent of receptors. And then 28 percent of enzymes, like the COX enzymes, phospholipase, like that. 
and hormone therapies where you want to target some hormones like aromatase inhibitors like that and dna directly targeting a dna and inhibiting a process for the nuclear receptors or nhl receptors and some are under still under investigation they don't know where drug is actually acting on so these all are the biochemical classification of the drug targets so when you pick any drug targets you was to put your drug in any one of these boxes so impact of your bioinformatics on that discovery so it's now now, now the upcoming field in a various uh, places is genomics gene based predictions identifying if you want to study the genetic based on identifications for specific or a personalized medicine you have to start from the genomics and gene with the protein information you want to gather then you have to get into the bioinformatics uh, put together heat so lead molecules along with the protein we call as a structural bioinformatics or you are a chemist or you purely belongs to chemistry people then you are dealing with a high throughput screening and heat and lead it is falls in the category called chemo informatics all together protein along with the lead molecule you are going for a structured based drug designing or you are converting only your lead to bring your drug candidate we call as an adm modeling so these steps interconnectedly to work together will help you to identify your best compounds for the further analysis and also it acts like your research process along with this one of these techniques in a combination of this technique to come out or to draw the best solutions so action of drugs is more important your yeah, drug is a substance or in a compound i could say that it could be used in treatment or for prevention of an any disease usually if you take in any drugs that will work in the one of this following ways either by interfering the biological function the function of this particular protein or a virus or a bacteria or a parasite has been inferred either by targeting a cellular function so that it will lose its functions so that colonization will be reduced thereby this decreasing its even activity or blocking its interaction like a uh, very good example i could say here is in uh, how this um, uh, sars cov2 receptor binding domain or s protein is coming and binding with our ac2 enzyme of our systems so either you can block the interactions or a host pathogen interaction releases of that or finally or you can enhance with the uh, own biological functions so this could be in a, we could say put together in the two ways whether your drug should be an antagonist or drug should be an agonist so any of this following method only your drug can fall chemi informatics chemi informatics is a method where you have to involve in the computer with the uh, information technology to solve the problems in your field of chemistry so chemo informatics would be used could be called as in a QSIR, QSIR, quantitative structure active relationship, or a dealing with the property is called a property based relationship, or a pharmacopoeia properties of any drug four molecules. What is this pharmacopoeia? So these pharmacopoeias are nothing but the end symbols or a functional group of your molecule that is responsible for your biological activity. So all these concepts have been highly used in the pharmaceuticals for screening of your drugs. So which one's good? So once you know about these things, then you'll be having a, you know about the, what is where, what why we want to do this one. So now there is a technique called the virtual screening that is a computational technique will help you to identify your hit candidate. This also can be performed in a corporate like this. Say for instance, if you don't have your compound in your hand, still if you want to perform your analysis. then you can go for an corporate like this like asmix or even you can take it from a chemdev or sigma average so what are the corporate like this or how even from they also you can start your process this mode of technique is becoming a very interesting and important tool for your lead discovery so why we have to do this it is a very quick we cannot test on a lakhs of molecules or hundreds of molecules in our uh, high throughput screening technique whereas we have only 10 molecules to be identified and they optimize it that can be feasibly work out so to provide quick and economically save your time and money these kinds of the methods are very useful 
And moreover, you can automate this process. Every time you don't need to do this process, you can automate it. And this is a cost effective. I can test lots of molecules against one particular target, but I cannot do the same thing in vitro or in vivo. So this combining put to all together, virtual scanning is the most crucial technique or in a very bone technique in a science and technology of a computational chemistry that help you to identify the lead molecules. So if you want to get into it, how do you process this? We have a two based, two approaches in your virtual screen. One is by means of a lichen based screening and another is by means of receptor based screening. Some people will take, put together, they take and both a lichen as a receptor based screening. In a lichen based screening, they will be taking chemical structures so just draw your structure, sketch your structures and clean your structure and optimize it. And from there, you can take your research. Or else, let me say that you have some molecule that seems to be a very active for one particular drug target. And I would like to synthesize same that kind of a molecule. So what you have to do that? You don't need to do again the, your molecule. You don't need to identify that molecule once again. Rather, you can do take that molecule and see for the similar sources like that, common sub features or substructures like that, or you can identify the pharmacophore functional feature of the particular molecule that is responsible for your biological activity, or you can check with the shape parameters on the three spatial arrangement to come out with a new compounds for an to come out with a new active set of molecules. This is not one way. So what could be your other way? There is also other way which we call as a receptor based screening. In the screening method, they will try to take a library of database of molecules and dock with a specific binding site. In case if you're not sure about your protein binding site, we can still you can do the global docking and rank your glycans based on scoring functions and repeat the process till you identify your best molecule. And what is a beautiful in the things, the flexibility of a receptor and lichen can be treated in the various stages of your receptor based screening. And it will be using your computational resources to identify your results. So people will try to do these methods put together or they will use one kind of a method for screening your molecules. Obviously, what, why we have to do so if you want to perform any kinds of an, uh, screening method, you should know why we have to do this process. We cannot simply or blindly do this process. There should be a, some significance that always lies in this kind of a screening. This kind of screening, like a virtual screening technique against you know, any active state of molecules will help you to identify or validate the active state of molecule to distinguish between your agonist and the antagonist. So if you think about it, I will say one example that there is an uh, enzyme called PPR gamma. When a PPR gamma, when it is binding with a specific elixir, we call as an agonist when it's binding an entrance enzyme or entrance amino acids, we call it an antagonist. The same protein binding in a different location will have a you know, various activity. So that could be very easily can be identified using a you know, ritual screening technique. So through that, we can call it as an agonist, which is enhancing your activity, antagonist that is inhibiting the activity. And this is a very easy process for the drug designing process. Even if you have a compound of a known or a, without having a target, it is still possible for you to consider the similar like compounds can be a potential targets. And uh, this screen will also aid you to identify or screen your large library of compounds that could have an, a very good affinity towards your specific receptor. So this is one of the most significant results of your virtual screening technique. And if I tell about a virtual screening technique as a most significant, there is also the fall proof of your technique. But how you can come over this, that is also, it's it will be a very, uh, it is like, an, if you have good things, there will be a definitely fall proof to be there. What 
where and all you have fault proof of this technique. This technique requires you to ability to correctly dock your chemical compounds. It is not simply just giving your protein and ligand and getting your results, but accurately identifying the binding site or identifying your, what are the crucial residues are important for your binding interactions. If your molecule is going and binding and specific confirmations and making this process, so then you'll be overcoming this fault proof technique. And uh, besides, it could also helpful to you how to identify the computationally free energy binding that cannot be applied for your millions of compounds. So you have to screen your molecules and apply and study the Gibbs free energy in the latest stages of your process. And therefore, most of your in silico methods can be trade off for accuracy and speed. And how you can outweigh. So for instance, you are trying to take your molecule from an X-ray bound molecule from your database, from a PDB or structural database. First, try to do the inverse talking, that is re-talking at the same place and checking out whether it is binding correctly or not. Then finally, dock your molecules and check out the results. These are the methods or ways you can out, outweigh your fault proof of your technique. The pitfalls of your HTEs, high throughput virtual spinning, can also be divided into four major categories. So it could be learner awareness, assumption and expectations, data design and content, and choice of software. It's more important that what software or scoring functions that you are depend on, how it is predicting, whether it is doing a confirmation. Talking is not a technique that's simply identifying a binding interaction but more or on into the confirmation sampling. Why in the sense, I could say that when you do the external crystallography analysis, there is one specific confirmation that Lycan will go and bind with the drug target and make it a biological activity. So the confirmation of your Lycan of a molecule, it's a more important in your high throughput screening, also in your virtual screening technique. Now we know about a virtual screening. So we are getting funneling down or narrowing down your process. First, we broadly classified and we are being a little bit, uh, we are just like a triangle. We had an uh, upside down triangle. We had a block classification and coming down about, we studied about uh, what is the bioinformatics, cheminformatics, virtual screening, why virtual screening and how to do that. Now narrowing down into the library. How do you create a library for this? You can create a library by mean either of these means, using a combinatorial well chemistry by having a one parent molecule and then three derivatives, and where you can come up to the 27 molecules, or you can go ahead and come out the compound with a cake like a database or a Campbell database, or you can pick it from a synthetic compounds, product, natural product library, zinc library, mini leverage. It's a commercial soft, commercial uh, database that is between this carbon studio. Similarity search, similar like molecules, concomitant similar like molecules, child clone similar like molecules, heterocyclic similar like molecules. You can take even those kinds of molecules. Substructure search, wherever I have a substructure of molecule, where some molecule like a naphthalene based rings or phenol containing ring with the aliphatic that I have to identify. You can go for a substructure based search. What else? There are also ready-made, there are come some compound databases are available like a binding DB and PubChem databases. From there also you can download and you can create and put together, you can form in a one particular library. So these are the ways of your library creation generation. So after creating it, what I am actually want to do that, what is my motivation or objective of this particular session? I want to screen my compounds to identify the pharmacokinetics and dynamic properties. That is my objective of this session. Let's see this, how I'm going to do this. So absorption, ADMAT is a very famous word that all the pharmaceutical people will come across. And now we did, even a layman is also learning after this COVID has arrived. So what is this telling about it? So any drug, that you are taking that should observe and it should have an ability to distribute inside your body and proper metabolism and excretion and toxicity. 
So whether it is making long storage of your drugs inside your body will definitely make you toxicity. So everything you have to analyze, whether what are the properties of a drug, that could be handled by means of a six different descriptors that is present in discovery study. First thing, using an aqua solubility and whether your drug, a drug is being um, causing a blood brain barrier or not, and whether it is making a metabolism with the metabolism enzyme like a, a cytochrome P450 family of enzymes or a hepatoxicity because the liver is a primary site for metabolism and your drug should not cause any toxic to hepatotic cells or hepatic cells and human intestine absorption and plasma protein binding because your blood is going to have a lot of plasma protein binding. Binding to that particular uh, uh, plasma protein binding will definitely affect your bioavailability of your drugs. So how I can do this process? It's, it is going to be very simple, I could say that. We don't need to worry much about it. Everything we are going to handle with terms of numerical numbers, that numerical numbers, each number has its own value. That own value says whether you where your drug is falling under the category, whether it is solubilizing or non-solubilizing, if it's penetrating or non-penetrating, or making toxic or non-toxic, everything it is going to handle within a few numerical numbers only. Now let's into that. So how do I perform this? Anyhow, I'm going to show you all this, uh, se I mean, practical session. But before that, I would like to tell you about this case. Whether, first of all, if you want to perform this process, adiamity properties, adiamity properties can be handled by means of you know, small molecules. Under the small molecules, we are having adiamity tools. Under adiamity descriptors, if you select this descriptors, you are free to select all this descriptors in the models inside of it. Solubility, blood brain barrier, CPY2, D6, hepatoxin. Select all these models. After selecting all these ones, just after loading your molecules, it could be in any format. Your molecule could be in SD or SDF, MOL or MOL2. What are the formats are they? You can you are free to select any chemical formats that is going to be diversity important and discovery studio. Once you import these molecules, you can select for the ADMT tools and the ADMT descriptors, double click and open, and you can process for the further analysis. So once you finish this process, so you can see here for 489 molecules, it took around only the eight seconds to finish this process. It also depends upon your system compatibility. System compatibility is very important when you want to perform any computation biological based analysis. Like how the instruments are more important in the in vitro. So computation, uh, computer configuration is more important in your in silico. So once you select this, you get your results like this. Anyhow, I'll be showing these results, but for your reference, I'm, I've been loaded here. So click here to view results, then open your plot. We'll ask you for your plot. Is give all these interpretation by means of a number or by studying. Seeing by visualization technique will grab the studies very easily. That's why we always prefer to see the plots. So click here to give S to your plot. Once you give quick X to your plot, rather, I, this is a sorted one. So you can see here the only, you can see the few uh, numbers like this three, four, two false like this. What is this actually is going to mean? That's what I'm going to explain to you. So if you have to loading your molecules after taking your dose molecule, you are going to screen those molecules in your various features. First thing, solubility. So when I click the plot, it actually looks like this. And I'll be always trying to see. This is like a uh, standard values that is present in the Scarborough Studio. So if you want to sort it out your molecule based on the levels, it says that level three is keep S, it is having a very good solubility. And the level four, it says that it, it's optimal. How they predicted this? They predicted by means of a solubility at 25 degrees Celsius, which has been published in a quantitative structure property relationship paper that says that yes, the, the drug will fall under this category and they will perform the various machine learning algorithms and from their results, they interpreted and identified this. And you can see here, there's a plot has been plotted within the polar surface area against the state of hypophilicity. And these colors are nothing but a confidential levels. It says 
that I just having uh, these of we call is the optimal prediction space of this ellipse. Whether if your molecule is going to lie in this specific region or the, within this uh, ellipse, will definitely will obey your ADMAT properties. And these are the molecules. And then we have on a specific uh, lines or ellipse uh, colors, which is states for an uh, absorption 95% for red, green 98%, blood brain barrier 93%, blood brain barrier 19% respectively. So first method, I'll be taking only the level three and four. You can see here, I kept only the solubility three and four. The rest of the levels I have deleted. So I have, once I delete it, you can see in the next step, how many molecules are going to be there. Off of the molecules or 70% of the molecules were left out during the screening. Imagine that you have taken only a few molecules in your hand, then you want to perform a database screening with the ADMAT properties. When you come to the next stage, there will be no molecule at all. So again, you have to restart your work. That's why when you want to screen your molecules, try to take a more number of molecules as much as you can. And that could be generated by means of the technique I told you in the first, uh, at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the session, how to create a light regenerations. Once you've done the process, you have to screen the not one by step by step by step per process like this. Next, I'm trying to check whether my molecule is having a blood brain, whether it is crossing the blood brain barrier or not. Because it's a very important parameter. So it depends upon the drugs they will predict whether it should have a high penetration or low penetration or medium penetration. So here I have taken for a penetration zero and one. So level zero or a one says zero is for very high penetration and one is for a high penetration. So how they predicted this? It tried to predict the blood to brain concentration after your oral administration. And it has been based on a fast polar surface area and atomic wise based on log T. And will be counted based on unknown A log T atoms found in your molecule with the base of logarithmic of your brain to concentration versus a blood concentration. It's all falls in the categorical level. So now it will be very easy, right? When you see this value zero and one year, so I can say that this is a very high penetration and one is it's a high penetration. So just by looking at all this result itself, I can able to predict. The second step of process is finished. Now I'm trying to screen the molecules in the second step. Some of the molecules are being left out. And then it's moving on to the another step is called C CYP2D6 screening of the enzyme, the important enzyme for the metabolisms. If metabolism enzyme is got inhibited, then there will be metabolism will not happen in the system. That is an idea of opponent. So predicting whether it is going and binding to the enzyme or not, it is very easy to predict. True means it is inhibitor, it is going and binding. And false means it is a non-inhibitor. It is not at all having an interaction with your this receptor. So without even doing a docking itself, you can predict by means of one of models and identify and use whether. So always try to read this sticking on to the level called false. That means a non inhibitor Moving on, hepatoxicity. Your liver cells should not get toxic because of your compound. Whether if it is going to get a toxicity, then it will affect your livers. It's a chemical factory. Liver is a chemical factory where it, when you try to give an uh, toxic to a cell, it will definitely affect your systems. So that's why we always keep an eye on that. The predicted class should be a non-toxic. False means non-toxic and true means toxic. And it potentially predicts a liver toxicity. That's why we call it a hepatoxic screening. So I always look for the things which is having the false. Moving on to the next one and identifying the absorption level. So when you try to do this, I will tell you that is a very easy way. When you try to optimize one parameter, the other parameter will be automatically optimized. So finally, when I come to the screening, absorption level will be only zero and one, or it will be zero or it will be one. So when I sort out the results, this will be automatically getting the optimization. And this human intestine absorption is very important. Absorb drug after the oral administration, and zero means good and one means a moderate. 
and finally plasma protein binding so the drug predicting a binding to blood blood plasma proteins and based on a comparison of the marker marker molecules has been described in this particular paper and says that if it is if there's a binding means true non binding means false so when you think about it when i started this process of screening uh, there is a lots of dots i can see it in my screen but as it keeps moves on i'm seeing only the few dots so when i have when i start with the only few dots then finally in uh, when i end up the process there will be a zero there won't be any uh, dots not present here so that's why try to take when you want to do your lead optimization from a database of molecules always stick to your large database of molecules and you can do the even a large you know even 25 lakhs 50 lakhs of molecules you have you can do the sub sub of library if you have a low computation cost also no issues you can subset your library of molecules and you can run parallelly and you can get your results so this is how the results look like pharmacokinetic screening is done So first, I have taken the twenty-five thousand molecules, which I am going to show you in the demonstration after finishing my theoretical session. And after moving on, after at my screening, I have only a forty-six molecules. From twenty-six to forty-six molecules, see how many folds it has got produced. So with this molecules, I am having forty-six molecules now in my hand. So now, if only I have only forty-four molecules, forty-six molecules. I am mean, moving on to the next technique. It's called a pharmacodynamic screening. How I am going to do that? It's not easy, right? But I think that using this coverage video, it will give it to your hand. It serves best to your hand. B is top cat. So we should understand how this top cat is analyzing has been done. So when I say those nowadays, we are so passionate about learning about machine learning algorithms and artificial intelligence. But before getting beyond, we without getting know about the machine learning algorithms, all these protocols are being developed using a machine learning tools like a Bayesian categorization, recursive partitioning, PLS methods, MLS methods like that. But now only it is becoming very famous among the peoples or researchers once the data science has been uh, taken a new phase in your uh, various uh, domains. So background and theory and how to know how this data has been interpreted and how to interpret your results. So quantitative. See, some people when you work on activity, we have a activity relationship QSCM. If you are going to work on toxicity, we call as a quantitative structure. toxicity relationship that means identifying a chemical has been transformed biological transformation into a toxicity a structure this is mathematically transformed into toxicity that you can predict by using is called qsdr technique so top cat methods we have extensible and top cat prediction models in extensible models it is initiated in 2.5 a decade before there is a discovery should be 2.5 now we are having a discovery should be 2021 version so you can see here how the growth of the software has been happen because of the people a lot of people have been involved in this and been making a very good algorithm or making trying to predict the algorithm or making an algorithm such a way it can be equally comparable with your in vitro to in vivo technique and it also uses an uh, regression method like a partial least square method and got the classification model called bayesian model and generally it's going to apply your two d test vectors fingerprints and layer of the you're not going to do anything new but it is written to your molecule returning to your molecule only you are going to identify that whether the molecule is having a fingerprints what it could be in a human will have fingerprints We, when you try to put your ink and then now uh, put it your fingerprints, you can have your own fingerprints like that. Even a molecule has uh, fingerprints. Fingerprints are nothing but in a structure or a compound uh, functions. I could say that C double one of O N O H N H O C O double one of C N O S. Like this, your molecule is having the fingerprints. A log the value. So two D test vectors, X vectors, two mass can predict it. And applicability, applicability from fingerprint, whether it could have an, uh, uh, it could have an predicting molecule or not, whether it could be utilized or not. So all this you can identify by means of domain applicability and model applicability, where it utilizes univariate analysis and OPM method, optimal predictions based method, and 
identify your molecules or classify your molecules based on similarity and structural things. And finally, in the endpoints, you can predict all these models sex wise, male rat, female rat, male mouse, female mouse, and the data can be taken out from your data. You already data sets are built using Discovery Studios by means of a national toxicity program or a food drug approval data sets and evidence of identifying the carcinogenicity, PD50 value, carcinogenicity potency, LD50, AIM food density, developability, toxicity potential, skin irritancy, whether your molecules make a skin irritancy or not, has been taken from a registry of toxic effects of chemical molecules, ocular irritancy from a trees, daphnia, daphnia magna, pathet mino. These two also are environmental models while we testing it, or a maximum tolerate based to disease, or aerobic piety drug activity. So all these things you can able to predict just by giving us some calculates. And I'm just trying to take this so that I'm not going to take that. So FDA total cost intensity data is obtained from US FDA approval department, center of the drug evaluation research center. They'll be getting results for a specific male, female, rat, and mouse because some drugs being effective we should show an uh, carcinogenicity for a male, but not for female, and some for a rat mouse and some for a mouse. So we have a separate data set results. It has been taken out from building a model called AL or Kula 50s even fingerprint information. Even you can have a multiple level predictions or single site or multiple site predictions also available. And enrichment of your results will say whether it is going to have a causation or non-causation. And you get the probability of your results and detailed report will say you what are the fragments are contributing for carcinogenicity or mutagenicity. And similarly, it is applicable for an weight of an evident carcinogenicity and the carcinogenicity potential TD50. Data is obtained from carcinogenicity potential database separately for your rat and mouse, and especially for TD50. You can predict very easily what could be a kg, gram per kg weight per, per day. And also it includes the various 2D fingerprints and you have every set of a toxicity program you're going to run. You get an applicable to results. Similarly for rat LD50, and your endpoints will be like this. And uh, to be in a pretty nutshell, so it try to predict the properties using a classification or regression models. It is a robust cost validated quantitative structure toxic relationship model for assessing your measure of the toxicity of your compound. And it will be molecule will be retrained. And every time when we update our software, we will we'll try to retrain our results and then input your molecules and then finally we'll be getting our toxicity prediction by computer assisted technology. And the two kinds of machine learning algorithm has been widely used is your aura Bayesian models and regression models using a PLS. And when you want to toxicity can be predicted that can be classified into a classification method or regression model. Classification method would say endpoints causation or non causation mutagen or non-mutagen that is built by means of a basic analysis technique. Regression model will help you to understand about your whether your molecule how, how could be a dosage for your molecule and moreover this is in a very good application to identify or optimize the therapeutic ratio of your lead molecules and help you to prioritize your com promising compounds and evaluate your intermediates and screen your molecules for a high throughput screening and could have an access for a pharmaceutical, commercial, industrial, and agriculture, and also to identify the potential safety concerns. So how do we do this? So when you want to do this process, it will simply, it is a, it's an easy process, actually, I could say that. After taking that 46 molecules, once it is been screened, load those 46 molecules here, and go to area with the extent of the top that prediction, and select the model which you want to perform. A FDA or the NTP, National Subsidy Program or Food Drug Approval. Both the models are available here. You want to check for skin irritancy or skin sensitization or latency or LD50 value, select those models. And give similar to such tool that means it will go and keep the inbuilt database in pipeline file and gives you what are similar like molecules like yours and shows your detailed report. If you keep a detailed report too, you get a PDF document that says each and every fingerprint of a molecule whether false contribution or true contribution like that. 
So when I give a true, I mean, when I want to interpret with the beginning, I always try to do only with a uh, true as in a PDF or document that will help you to understand more data. You add finally, you end up with a more number of data, but we should know how to interpret our data. Maybe this is my input molecule. From the input molecule, when I keep the structure similar like compounds, it will go and keep with the molecule. So it is showing that this is non mutagen I cannot simply accept this is a non mutagen Why I need a proof for this? Why in the sense, I, when I say to some person, this molecule is non mutagen I cannot uh, agree with them. So if they show me the proof, that means that these are the fingerprints are responsible for meeting a non mutagen or making a carcinogen or non carcinogen then I will believe in that one. Similarly, here also Discovery Studio Pocket Analysis will do this process automatically when you do this analysis. It will try to hit with a lot of fingerprints of molecules or structure similar molecules and identifies what makes a molecule to be a non mutagen or non carcinogen or carcinogen. And also it identifies a way of fingerprints. There are more than 350 fingerprints are available in Discovery Studio, all been created under the BioVia Discovery Studio. They have a lot of fingerprints to say, this is a positive contribution of combo to have to be a non mutagen This is a negative contribution of combo to, to show a non mutagen or a mutagen city. So like this, you will get any results. Similarly, it could be applicable for other models also. For non carcinogen or carcinogen, what could be carcinogen? So, if it should be a carcinogen, it should be like this. For a, what could be a positive contribution because of this particular moiety or fingerprints, it, it's showing like this. So, each and every fingerprint of a molecule is very important when you scheme your molecules in a top city prediction. Even you can identify set dosage and ranges of the animal assays, taking a rat TD50 and oral LD50 rat inhalation. And if you want to identify the fathead mean of LC50 value or Daphnia EC50 or mouse TD50, all this toxicity prediction growth rate ranges can be identified using a regression analysis. And finally, once you did this process, how do you say my molecule is a lead candidate? That is a very important thing. We'll be skewing our ligand with the Lipin skis on Weber's law file. The rule is a good principle to spin our compounds, but it requires a large samples. It helps you to identify the drug likeness ligands according to the rules formulated by Lipinski. Lipinski say that A log P value should be less or equal to 5, and molecular weight should be less or equal to 500, and the hydrogen of acceptor should be less or equal to 10, and the hydrogen of donor should be less or equal to 5. And along with them, Weber is also claimed that rotatable bone is also very important for a molecule along with the polar surface area. He said that rotatable bone should not be more than 10 and polar surface area should not be more than 140 Armstrongs. If a Lycans are passing these filters, then it will have a high probability to have a good oral bioavailability. So this is the first step of screening. And finally, when I screen the molecules, Anyhow, I'll be going for preparation of lichens. Once you prepare lichens, it will try to add or enumerate fixed bad valencies and finally I get the best prepared lichens for the further analysis. Prepare lichens, just simple click the prepare lichens, it will take care and you get a set of lichens like this. Now, screening for your molecules from a database is ready. Now, what we should do this? So with this, what I have draw the conclusion is since these molecules are have been followed and a hit, it is converted into lead like molecule. But still, it is not stopped here. We are not so far bit of a structure based on designing. We should check whether this prominently is going to binding to the binding side. If so, binding, how it is binding, is making interaction, what type of interaction is going to make. That's what we are going to analyze in our. Next step of process is called structure based appraisal. So, as of now, screening is completed. Now, we are moving on to another drug designing process. Structure based drug designing. So, structure based drug designing, when we apply this as a stated in a drug discovery scenarios, we have a known receptor and known lichen. Choose your protein. Or a disease 
of interest or a protein of interest and prepare your protein. Once you do this process, you have to define a binding site or a cavity, or you have to define a crucial amino acid that's disported. And after that, you have to prepare a set of ligand molecules and choose a specific blocking algorithm to perform this process. And finally, analyze interaction analysis, doc scoring. So all these things are put together into a form called structure-based stuff designing. So this is a docking workflow. You all can capture this. So preparations, it starts from protein and ligand. Ligand was already screened. It is kept in my hand. It's ready for the next process. But what is lagging here? It's a protein part. I don't know what protein I have to take and how to do the docking and how to score and how to refine, how to validate it. That's what we are going to do in a SPDD or structure-based pharmacophone uh, structure-based uh, drug presenting process. This one will help you to even if you have your known active molecules and defaults also you can take. And objective is to optimize your docking method and identify the scoring function. So best to discriminate and prioritize your actives and defaults. And if you want to identify, identify the molecular interaction, it also help you to identify, help me to discriminate actives and decoys. And the scoring and refining process is a very important validation process of docking project. And screening is totally based upon your molecules that you're taking for an further analysis. So as soon as you download any protein in the discovery studio, we'll be having a tool called a uh, protein preparation tool. This protein preparation tool will help you to understand about the detailed report of your protein. In case if you're not sure about working on a PDB database, we are having a URL to download your proteins. The URL will take you to the PDB database. Always your PDB ID is alphanumeric in a four-letter word. The four-letter could be arranged in any such a fashion, it's specific for you know, one particular receptor. And the basic information about your protein, that is a 4EKI, L will be taken care of, and you get a basic information, and what are the bound like on, how many solid molecules are added to the extra crystal graphy, and how many chains are present, if so, which chain, if there is an incomplete residues are missing or in, invalid residues are present missing. So even those information is also can able to collect it. In the active site, in the active site, what are the amenities of protein contributed to that? Usually when you want to do the docking, why, what we'll be trying to do, we'll be identifying the active site and we do that active site, we I try to dock on molecules and see whether it is working and the same interactions or not. So if you're not sure about that active site amino acid, this tool itself will say that what are the active site amino acids. In some cases, in the active site, there are some water molecules also will play a major role. If that is the case, you're not supposed to delete those water molecules, which is present inside your active site, because it is considered as a crucial pharmacophore of your interaction. Sometimes it could have a carbon hydrogen bonding interaction, or in some cases, it could have under bridging interactions. So when you see some water molecules in the active site, when you do this analysis, don't delete that water molecules. So protein preparation is more important. So even you have to delete and select your protein and show clean your protein to try to delete the alternative confirmers and incomplete residues and try to alter your pores. Once you did this process and you prepare your protein, that will take care of you all the process. So it will try to insert the missing atoms and incomplete residues and missing loop regions and try to delete alternative conformers. So what is this alternative conformers? Sometimes this uh, residues like the histidine, aspartic acid, and glutamine, and glutamic acid, this will try to move. It will never stay perfectly when you do a for extracrystography data. It will try to move from one place to another place. So that will be captured as an alternative conformers and removing waters and standardizing atom names. So all this process and proteination is very important that uh, different amino acid is having in different proteination states that we are not sure about it, right? So that's why we always give a default option, proteinate and prepare and give me the best protein for docking. So when you click this prepare protein, it will take off all this process and finally you get the results. So you can see your building loops. If uh, some cases, you will also get a 
loops are not captured during your analysis in your stratigraphic data. Even if you want to build those loops, the database will automatically display this data record and local regions and protein and advanced option. Once you try to introduce any changes into your protein, then definitely there will be a changes or you have to apply your charm protein to optimize your proteins. So take that optimized protein, so preferred protein for your docking analysis. So okay, now protein is done. What should I need to do that? Binding site. The binding site is very important for your binding of your ligand because you cannot do it randomly binding. We should define some site for your ligand to go and bind. Before doing a docking, you should identify or you have to define the binding set. How we can do this process? Binding set characteristics has been previously defined by Werner, Leon, and Levesky as stated that there are small molecules will go and bind majorly to the indentations, curvatures, or the cavities. And put together to expand exclusively, he told that often the large binding site where your ligand will have and the probability of binding will be more. So your ligand will go and bind to a site where you can see the large binding site or the large cleft, I could say that. So identifying a binding site is also, it's not uh, tough. It will be very easy as that. First, after prepared your protein, load your prepared protein here and define as a receptor. Once you define as a receptor, and automatically you can define by means of either base, either by using a receptor cavity method. This receptor cavity method will be putting your protein in your grid and identify the binding site cavities. Wherever the cavities are present, it will try to apply two different algorithms. The eraser algorithm and a flat filling algorithm will work together and identify the receptor cavities. That is like a site search algorithm, you could say that in other words, or by means of PDB site record. In the PDB itself, we will say active sites are present. If you want to dock with the active sites, you can select from a PDB site records or from the current selection. So then we go for current selection. You are very specific about the binding. You do all the certain amino acids are required for your binding. Only for those amino acids, my docking should happen. So then you have to go for the current selection. So these are the three different ways where you can define your receptor before going for your docking. So once you assume that, you've defined the binding site. So even you, if the XP crystallography bound like one also, you can define as a binding site. Once you define your binding site, now moving on to a you know, technical docking. So docking is more important. We cannot simply do the docking because it needs a you know, it's, it is not an easy task as we think that you know, doing just talking and identifying the site cannot work out when you go for in vitro or in vivo technique. But identifying the proper bindings and docking will definitely will make a uh, meaningful distance when you go for uh, in vitro or in vivo. So docking a small molecules in the larger protein is often a complex and difficult task. But this comparatively, if you think about it, you have a lot of keys in your hand and you want to open your appropriate lock, like the enzyme will bound to the specific glycan. The same process here also, it's a lock and key process and try to identify the confirmation of the glycan to bind the receptor. There is a specific confirmation of your key where it opens your lock. Similarly for your glycan also, there's a specific confirmation. It will go and bind with the receptor on a complex or on target where it opens or shows in good interactions. So how do you measure this results? So this application contains a several docking tools. You have an algorithms like a C docker. It's a one of the tools is going to interpret whether the molecular dynamic simulation based docking and the lib doc. It's by means of hot pot based docking and lycan fit by means of structured complementarity based docking and MCC a small molecule based docking. So we have a lot of algorithms to define the binding of your molecule with a receptor to measure that active, to measure that value in terms of a quantitative way. So using that quantitative method, you can identify which molecule we have to prioritize for your further analysis. The central assumption is very important for doctors. 
because uh, even though the molecule is being sh showing a shape complementarity, if some of the complementarity, what is this complementarity? This chemical complementarity is not between your receptor and target, that will definitely lead to a false group of your cells. The central assumption for a structure based drug is that it states that good inhibitor must possess a significantly structured and chemical complementarity to the specific drug target. Considering this, con considering your yeah, steady considerations of your shape and size, because uh, if your size of your lichen is very bigger than your binding site, definitely the lichen will go on, never will go on bind. So this is also more important and can take into chemical consideration charge and nonpolar interactions. If your receptor is rich in hydrogen acceptor and your lichen is also having more hydrogen acceptor, then even though there is a shape complementary three stain, it will never go on bind because there is no chemical complementary is not there. If your lichen is having acceptor, then there should be a donor. Donor is there, the acceptor should be there. And there should be hydrophobic, then it should be hydro. So like this, a complementary should be there between your receptor and lichen, then only it will go on by accurately and use your cells. And you'll be having a doubt that uh, which method I have to choose at which stage. There are more methods that are available in this garbage studio. You could use in a methods like this. If you have a dietary size more, you have a maybe a five ten thousand molecules you have. First, you can screen with a high throughput screening method called a lip dog. From there, you can identify the best conformation of a molecule. Either you can go for gold. Gold is a third party. If you have a gold in your laboratory, you can install via this Carbury Studio and you can use as an interface and you can go ahead the process. Otherwise, if you don't have that one, you can go for a C walker. It's a charm based molecular dynamics talking where it will be heating your molecule and identifying the binding interactions. And finally, you can go for a flexible docking where you're both in a sucker and like and be in motion. So different algorithm, C docker is a like and based and charm for C based algorithm. Lipdoc is a fast docking based on binding site features. Lycan fit is nothing but shape based things. MCCS is a multiple copy simulation search algorithm. Flexible docking uses a lip dock as a C docker. And we should know how this algorithm is works because it's more important to know about the basic of interactions and how this algorithm is working. So C docker is a grid based of molecular dynamics docking that employs with a charm to generate a random lichen conformation is one of high temperature molecular dynamics. So what it will try to do, it will try to do initially to generate the lichen conformations based on high temperature molecular dynamics, and then randomly identify the rotation, that is a rigid body rotation, and goes for the grid-based simulation underlying. And finally, with the full minimization, you get the results with an output refined lichen process. From the refined lichen process, you can go for a further analysis. So how do we do this? It's uh, very simple. Just after doing and defining a binding site and finish the process over, you will be loading your set of molecules and your receptor site, and you'll be choosing a high throughput screening as an optimization phase C docker. Once it's selected, I'll be giving a post clusters. Everything I'm keeping as a default and running this protocol. When you run the protocol, I get the results like this. So the results shows that the C docker when I click select. Click here to view results, and then you get your results here. And the docking process will be ordered based on the minus C docker energy. Higher the value indicates, more the favor of this binding. Minus indicates the internal lichen strain of your receptor, I mean energy, and receptor lichen interaction energy. And the interaction energy can also be reported as a minus C docker interaction energy. So it will in the Tabular column, it will be showing as a minus C doc energy. Then your values must be positive in your tab. That means that it is a minus C doc energy value. So once you identify that one, so what is my next step? This is a filtering and analysis. I'll be looking for the non bonding interactions, analyzing lichen forces and interaction filtration because I should know where the lichen is actually going and binding and whether it is making good interaction or not. So for that, if you want to see the atomic level interaction of this molecule, it will be always like this. It will try to exchange an atom in between your receptor and the lichen. And when you look into your system, it always an atom rather than a molecule. It will try to exchange 
and then it forms an interaction and try to make a bonding. Once it makes a bonding, it will be measured in terms of a numerical terms called and numerical numbers. It will be expressed in terms of an Armstrong's. So even you can identify the many different types of an, uh, interactions. Like if you have uh, all these things are being totally depend upon the molecule that you're talking. You'll get a halogen. If you have molecules having a halogen base containing things and hydrophobic and hydro hydrogen burning and other type of interactions. And you get an interest like this. You have to interpret the results, bonding with a favorable interaction and bonding with the unfavorable interaction that shows there is some bump between your uh, molecule and the uh, amino acids here. So always try to take an uh, favorable interactions rather than taking unfavorable one because in later stages, it may also cause some issues. So that's why it is better to interpret in the interpretation of uh, interaction analysis itself, following to try to take only a favorable interaction results. And then you no need to worry about it. Once you click your results, automatically this tablet column will be updated there where you can identify the atomic level of interaction between your atoms present in your binding site and atom of your molecule and automatically gives your distance and falling into category and types of bonds. And imagine that if you have more number of forces, like more than 2,000, 5,000 forces, then you can automate the process using analysis diagram forces that will try to identify and statistically validate and give your results where for you to identify the favorable interaction of the molecules and favorable interaction of the molecules and hydrogen bonding interaction of the molecules. So like this, along with your histogram diagram, this will help you to identify whether your molecule is making a specific interaction with your active site amino acid or not. So by looking into this graph itself, you can able to predict it very easily by means of statistical residues analysis. So this is how where we are going to stop. So whatever I told you, I know I'm going to show you in a, a real time environment where I'm going to access the bio. We have discovery studio software, going to select the icons and going to show you the interaction analysis in between them also, followed by in the form of a kind of training also. So thank you. So, thank you everyone. I've been going through a small break. I hope everyone has uh, returned back. So this is a discovery studio client you are seeing. That's a 2021 version. And as soon as you open, there will be a welcome page to say about what are the actions that you're taking and what are the recent files and notifications. So I'm trying to close this one. And uh, let me give an overview about the software Then I move on to the screening process. It will be a very easy way. So you cannot uh, imagine that uh, I will be going for an even data set of molecules. I'll finish within uh, 10 to 20 minutes. So in Discovery Studio page, you have a sophisticated tools to perform for macromolecules, operations, simulations, receptor like on interactions, pharmacophore modeling, small molecules, and extracellular graphic data analysis. We divide the software in such a way that we have a tools to either to give an inputs and analyze your results and the protocols to perform your actual operations. In the discovery studio protocols, we have a macromolecules, small uh, pharmacophore, receptor, and then uh, as like the simulations and extracellular graph data. This will be always connected to the server called a pipeline file edge, and it will be shows in whether how the resource levels are there. And if you performed already previous jobs and you want to analyze your results, you can select here and you can locate. It will show you the history of jobs that you are done and which date and server locations. And you have any tools to access for your URLs at editing and viewing for the chemistry and then the structural information and you want to draw a chart for a scripting to get a publication quality of results or whatever. So these operations will be activated only when you open your specific tools or main uh, display in a 3D window. We call it 3D window here, this is a job place and this is a protocol view. And then uh, moving on, we have a uh, tools to performance and windows and help options. If you're not sure about it, we also have an uh, inbuilt tutorials to perform these operations. Now, when you want to begin the process, it's always, we always tell the people to create a new folder, create a new folder in such a way, whatever work that you're going to perform, that will be saved in a specific folder. Let me say that uh, I'm trying to folder, right click, 
and setters default. So you can differentiate your folder from your other folders. Your folder will look at and you can see it in a blue wind color icon as compared to another other folder. Now, first step of this process is how to even import and export. That is more important. When I open some icons, so let me open some icons. If I'm opening one particular icon, this is a icon I'm opening. I want to save this icon. So I want to import the icon. So I will import it here in the SD format. You can import even SDF format or an MOL format or MOL format. And I want to save this hits in a specific uh, chemical format that is also feasible. Go to file, save us. We are having a various input formats. You can see a viewer MOL, SD or SDF2. You can save it in any of these formats. So whether you want to save it in desktop or other locations, that could be feasibly accessible to this particular options desktop with all the drive locations also you can able to access here or type as in the discovery studio file so charm foundation file each and every different files or you want to save it in a pdb file so if you have a protein structure definitely you have to save it in a pdb format so like this you can save your molecules or same way you can import your molecules so if not if i have to drag if you have more number of molecules so basically if you go for file new molecule window and you can drag your molecules like this if you have more number of molecules you can just do the tracking like this even the samples also i will show this we have some molecules in the samples i can just select and can drag that will load all my molecules here so it is it will be very easy to model save your molecules also now i can save in a library i can go to file save us in sd format Put it in a space, okay, at college, okay. our homes. Okay. Okay. I can close this one and I can double click and open the article. So later use also I can use. Or in case I don't want this particular tax to be displayed every time, I want to keep it very only my molecule names and like that is also feasible. You can use this arrow to shift it here and give control H to view. And then don't want any other attributes to be displayed over here. Right click here, remove attributes, select and remove this attributes and click OK. That will remove the attributes. And if you want to save it, just give control S. That's it. SD format. Select, save. So, this is how you can import and export the files from on Discovery Studio. This is the most and primary step. And uh, later on, I'm, when I go for structure based web designing, I will show you how to download the uh, uh, protein and then go ahead and process. Now, we will go for a uh, Pharmacokinetics and dynamic spin. I'm going to take some molecules. So let's see the, what is the count of this molecule. It's approximately at 23,125 molecules. If you want to see, you can see your structures, give control H. So this is how this molecules has been loaded now. Now, if I want to perform this area MIT, I'm moving on to the protocol, small molecules. Area Mitty, Area Mitty descriptors. So input ligands, I'm trying to select all the molecules. There are different ways you can select. If I'm trying to select few molecules, so there are three ways it shows. You can see here selected. That means only selected molecules that is highlighted in here. Yellow wind color only taken for a process. Visible means visible in a 3D wind. This is a 3D window. All means all the molecules in the particular tablet column. All the molecules will be taken here. So now my aim is to perform with the, all the molecules. Select all. And then you run. And then all means all the, by default, all these options will be selected. And then you run. Once you did run, always Discovery Studio has a habit of saving your inputs and then executing a process. It will save your protocol, this protocol, and then a molecules and runs the process. And you can see that this execution. And where it is running, it is running under this options. 
see here that is a job will be created, date will be created, along that will be if we get results. So it is under progress. We know how to get results like this, age. So it is trying to calculate it. 23,000 molecules, let's see this. Yeah, finished. Click OK. I'm going to close this input now. And then either you can view the results like this or double click and open the results like this. So either way you can access your results. But right now I'm double clicking and opening. And it shows a description and then you get your results summary and then how good this is. Click here to view results. So it'll always ask you for plot, click S. Okay, so now we do the screening. How we are going to do the screening and trying to push all these things here. Interactively, we can do screening. So now I'm going to concentrate only on the levels. So our uh, aim is to sell it only on the levels. So I have solubility level that print barrier level and then CPY prediction level and then moving on hepatoxicity level prediction level and then absorption level and then plasma protein binding prediction level so I have all the levels of the scripting now so one way if you want to sort it out there is a you can put it in uh, ascending and descending order and you can sort your results that is a one way of doing it, but it is not, uh, it's not appreciable to do like this because sometimes what will happen, it will hang out or if you have more number of molecules, like the lakhs and lakhs of molecules, it will, your system will try to hang out. So it is not appreciable to do like that, but rather, how do you do that? We have a smart filtering options here. A right click here, filter. It opens another pop-up window. In the pop-up window, we have what are the tabs are there that will be displayed over here. So let me select solubility level or uh, less than, I, it should be a three and four. Okay. Um, greater than or equal to, okay, not greater than, one sec. Could go for uh, less than, then less than means it will include one and two also. So let me put that up greater than three, greater than or equal to three. Okay, that would be the idea. Okay, so greater than or equal to three. Select apply filters, name, apply. Okay. See the, the molecules as they sorted down. We have only few molecules. So when you want to see this count, only three and four are retained. So started with 23,100 and something. Now we have only 18,600 and something. Some of the molecules have come out because it's not omega solubility. Soluble three, it's good. And four is for optimum. Moving on, blood brain barrier, I would like to take only zero and one. So same filtering technique. So blood brain barrier, less than or equal to one. So I'm selecting me, apply, you can see here automatically it is reduced. Okay, so you may think that where the legend is gone, why the legend is not coming. If you want to see the legend, you have to right click here, display style, access and font, show legend, okay. So you'll get a legend which shows about your area of the absorption level like that. So my next level, I know that uh, filter, my uh, prediction, CPY prediction equals, should be false. And I can apply even this technique why I'm doing one by one in the sense, just to show you the number of counts it is getting way data. So now it has come to 3206. So I'm going to apply the multiple filtering options here. So it should be a false, hepatoxidy prediction must be equals to false. And then moving on to absorption level, plasma protein binding prediction must be equals to false. 
absorption level. I'm not going to touch absorption. Let's see how it is indirectly adjusting to that, uh, the indirectly optimizing that. Main upway view. See here, we get only a few molecules. So it, randomly, it, uh, how much time I have taken, not more than five minutes to do this process. So finally, I got only a 47 ligands. I didn't do with an, any absorption, like automatically the absorption will be taken care of. I told you that if you try to optimize one level, the other level will be automatically tried to optimize. So I get the results like this. So how do you say this results? It's more important. And if you want to say this results, go to file, save as image files. If you want to save this image file, it is simpler. And right click, go to file, save as image files. So let me put it to Lara College. Any have a team. Ask you for pixels, you can save it even in the higher pixels also. Click OK. Now we got the results. So after finishing this, I have only the 47 molecules, which I need to take it for another further analysis. That means the top cut analysis. Push it here, give control H and save this molecule. Select here, shift, press, select the shift and then select the molecules, give control C or you can save it directly also. There is either way you can do that, but I'm trying to include one more step. Go to file, New molecule window, paste it. It is trying to paste. Only those molecules will be saved here that you can take it for the you know, top cut analysis. Yeah. I think it saved all the molecules. One sec. Good. So when I select see here, it did not apply the filtering at all. That's the reason I want to show you this. So select these molecules because the filter has been applied there. Go to file, save us. Maybe I could put it here. Okay. Add my screen molecules. Maybe I need to name the molecules. Or SD format. Okay. You can save the molecules in the same block. You can you can monitor here. I want to check my molecule for in the top cat, I mean top cat analysis to predict whether it was having toxicity or not. So I'm keeping this one. So go to protocol and use a top cat prediction extensible. I'm free to choose close this one. So let me select randomly any molecules. Let me select three molecules and analyze the results. A may be visible models. Let me select only two models and let me take only AIMS metagenicity, one with you know, prediction of a regression set dosage approach, other was MPP. Click OK. Somatic search true, you can report true. PDF report, if I want means yes, I want PDF report because I'm initially analyzing the results. Click true for all. And then give. So it's now started. It will try to prepare the report. So it's finished and finally we are going to get output. So it's predicted. So double click and open the results. I'm closing this inputs. It is not right for me as of now. So you get your results like this. You get output like ions, output similar compounds present in the training set and detailed report and view this. Click here to view detailed report. Detailed report, yes. 
So you'll get your results like this. So if you click the detailed report, you'll get an AIM for data genetic results like this. I think uh, my screen is still visible, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma th thank you so much, ma'am. So in AIMS mutagenicity, you will get an whether it's showing a mutagen and non-mutagen. If so, non-mutagen, how it is predicted to be non-mutagen? That will show you the positive contribution of your molecule and their expected fingerprints here. Is CFP and with a length of 12 is unknown, one of the fingerprint, which shows to be a positive contribution. When I try to move on, similarly, it will show you for another fingerprint and a positive contribution. This is all positive contribution. And for negative contribution, what are the fragments of fingerprints are making a negative contribution of your molecule? So we get a mutagen in a training sets of molecules, which is already inbuilt in your pipeline pilot software. It's a part of the discovery studio. And then as keeps moves on, similarly, you can for AIMS mutagenicity for other molecule, positive contribution, negative contribution, and the reference in the molecules, and the distance, and the distance will be measured in terms of one, uh, uh, Manhattan distance or a man distance alone, you can able to predict what distance between your molecule to their molecule that is present in the database and shows you similarly the positive contribution. These are the fingerprints and the negative contribution of the molecule. And then similarly for this is also non-mutagen, is similar like an original molecule. And if so, if shows a mutagen or a, I mean a it shows all non-mutagen, but if in case if it shows mutagen, you it will show you the fingerprints, right? The positive contribution, negative contribution. You can select those fingerprints and you can modify and you can rerun the results to make sure that still your molecule should should be come to a non-mutagenic level. In case it shows a mutagen, look for the fingerprint, which fingerprint is showing to be a mutagen change that functional group or the position or the moiety and make us a non-mutagen. That is an idea of introducing the detailed analysis report in Discovery Studio. So similarly, the molecules should to be a non carcinogen Why non carcinogen chain fingerprint you can able to describe and you can analyze it. Similarly for third molecule, this is for a male, this is for a female, and similarly, let's see for the male, this is for female. This is also for female. So now see here. Same molecule, but the different sex as in different prediction and activity. So here you will get that the same molecule is showing a carcinogenicity. So why it is showing carcinogenicity if a positive contribution, negative contribution, you can see here. So you have to identify those fingerprints and then you have to change that fingerprints, especially in a male rat or a male mouse. So that's why the sex-based analysis of cosmogenesis is very important or rat oxid is very important. That's why I have selected NTP, the National Toxicity Program Based Analysis. For the molecules to be a non carcinogen this is a prediction. For the molecules to be a carcinogen these are the fingerprint location and position which I to show here. So we have to identify and we have to replace it. So here is also carcinogen. And then here is also carcinogen. But in a female, everything is shown to be a non carcinogen Similarly, we see for a rat female, positive contribution for your, uh, for your uh, analysis and negative contribution for analysis. Let's see here, this is a non carcinogen non carcinogen but uh, made by the for a male rat is a non carcinogen but for a male mouse it shows to be in a uh, carcinogen. So this way of analysis will help you to gain more knowledge about the fingerprint of your molecule or chemical moiety and why it is happening. So if you predicted a given a value for in a dosage prediction, it will predict and gives you dosage and what should be a unit also. So you'll be getting a detailed analysis report only when you keep here true in the detailed report you get this analysis and you can interpret it and you can draw your conclusion this is how we have to draw your conclusion for your top cat let me move on so click here to view results in case if you're not sure about it we are not new to that you can also study your results by means of another 
applicability and the prediction. So if you keep moving on, it shows a non-cost margin. If you're not sure about it, here also you can introduce a filters. Prediction equals to non-cost margin. Main apply. Okay, so call a non-cost margin actually. Now let's apply this for a main mouse equals non-cost margin. It's a cost margin. So it's all our cost margin. It's not showing another one. Here it's, it's all non cost function. Anyway, it's a cost function. If it is they two or things are they, everything seems to be cost function. So we can also, from this, we can also understand that all the male NTP rats or a male mouse or seems to have a cost function or non cost function. So we have more number of molecules to be analyzed. We can screen by means of a smart filtering technique. So now the, all the molecules are shown seems to be non cost function. Now, I want to take this molecule for a lipid squeeze or oral bioavailability analysis. So, how I'll be doing this? Selecting these molecules. So, let me remove those attributes because it's trying to have like uh, compartments like this. So, I'm trying to delete this. Right click, remove attributes, select, shift select, click OK. That's it. So next option, I'm going to see this molecule for a drug likeness properties. So for its drug likeness property, go to general purpose, filter by Lipinski's and Weber's law file. If you're not sure about what Lipinski has told, and then in the expand, you will so show this options and number of violations. If you're very strict in uh, being looking for oral bioavailability, number of violations should be zero. Now, as of now, you can see for another Weber's rule what he said. Select and if you don't want to select webbers, you can select this on unselect this option and only run only for lipids. Please give all molecules. Let's finish all three ligands are passed. So, mostly when the ligands are more 90, I could say 30, 85 to 90 percent. If the ligand is passing the ADMAT properties, that will definitely will pass in the lipids. So close this result, double click and open, click here to view result, and you get your results. So fast, filter like ones. So why it is fast? All obeying on the pin screen will offer. If it is failed, it will fail the reason also why this got failed. So now I did my uh, pharmacokinetics and dynamics, and also I checked the for the oral bioavailability. So from this, I have three number of three sets of molecules. From these three molecules, I'll be going for the prepare ligands. So now I have to use prepare ligands. The small molecules, general purpose, I have prepared ligands. So I'm keeping true as all other options I'm keeping as such. And then giving run. And prepare, yeah, I got the. See, I have given only three lichens. Why six lichens are put there? Let's open and see because some lichens will have a different tautomers and isomers three through three day. So all these things also will be loaded here. Say for instance, uh, curcumin in an enol form and keto form, both are a non-equilibrium. It could have in any forms, but a keto form of a lichen will have in a different biological activity and enol form of your lichen will have a different biological activity. Similarly, the location of isomers sometimes will have a different biological activity. That's why the tool will predict even those options also and get you the results. So now my lichen is prepared and ready for my further analysis. So I'm closing this and I'm going to depend on it first. Next, I'm going to concentrate on my receptor side. So how many, what receptor I'm going to take? I can take any kind of receptor. So when you want to download it, let me open an URL. Uh, okay, let me take an HIV native quickly. It's a one O D W. Open. It's ready to download and download it. Give control H. So only when I see this is a HIV native protease, it's a HIV native protease. But if you're not sure about it, once you download any protein structure, immediately go to macromolecules and study the protein report analysis. Under the protein report analysis, we have a protein report. 
Once you select a protein report, read that report. This report will help you a lot actually. So it says you the basic information about this protein and what is a bound glycan and then a chain of amino acids. What are the chains are present? So you can see that both the chains are identical. Okay, there is no missing residues. And you will get the information about the active site. This active site is very important and crucial will say about the what are the amino acids are present in the active site. And you can even see that there are two water molecules are present in the binding site, active site of your uh, inter, uh, of your protein. So when you go for docking, you're not supposed to carry these water molecules. And what is the ACT? AC is fine, it's active site. You also get for enzymes and then uh, for any kind of an enzymes, you'll get ACT that says that the catalytic triad, very important for your biological activity. You will get only even ACT information. And then as it keeps moves on, I told you, right, this is an uh, HIV native protein. So you can find HIV1. And you can see this dot is the name of this particular protein. But information is known in everything you get from the basic information report. When you click the protein report, any protein. So this option is even available for you in the Discovery Studio Visualizer also. That is freely available. When you download Discovery Studio Visualizer, when you download the protein, you can read your protein information that would be visibly available. Only thing you cannot see is a protocol. You never see these protocols in a, when you download the visualizer. You never connect it to the server. Server is a more important for your process to execute it. So now, why I told, uh, why now I'm going to retain only those two water molecules and delete the other one. So first go to structure. Okay, now moving here. The structure, crystal cell and remove cell. And if this is a water molecule, when you select this water, you will see the water molecule. When you select the head atom, the head atoms. So you may think in your mind that uh, many paper reports would need one particular chain, but not the two chain for the docking. Why I have to need to keep these two chains? When you think the reason for this, these two, I mean, chains are put together, it's forming a binding site. If only a one particular chain, say in case if a glycan is binding in this region, in this region, then absolutely it is fine to take for you know, one particular chain and for identical chain for docking. But in case if the two identical chains or in a molecule or the chains are making a binding site like this, you're not supposed to delete that because it's very important for your binding activity because your glycan is binding in between the two different chains. So now steep for in the water molecules. When you select the active sites, you can see the active sites. And then you can look into this, uh, what are the amino acids. If you want to look at the amino acids, I selected the active site. I didn't do anything. I selected the active site. When I want to label it, you can right click, label, add amino acid, different color. Let me select the pink color. Apply, okay. You get those amino acids present in the active site. Okay. Now let's look for in the water molecules. So now we have the protein site in interaction. If you want to see this interaction, first let me delete the water molecules, except 301 and 401, because that is very important in the active site. 301. So rest of the things you can use the shift option and you can delete it. And then 401. Delete. Delete. Okay. Except these water molecules, other water molecules I am free to delete because if you see what is the role of these water molecules, you can see it is a person in the active site. Can you see this? These two water molecules are present inside the active site. So when you want to see the interactions, select your receptor molecule of the protein or the like one. Go to the receptor like one interactions, different bind editing site, view interactions, different like on, like on interactions. Can you see here why water molecules are important for binding? 
there is a bridging interactions are happening and also there is an interaction between this and as soon as I do this process automatically I will get a like on non monitoring will be updated that says which molecule and what type of interactions types what uh, hydrogen bond conventional hydrogen bond interactions are happening and from chemistry to chemistry accept that donor donor to accept the alkaline so like this information also i'll be getting here okay now moving on so this is a very important thing to identify now i'll show you preparation of protein protein preparations are very important So uh, why, why why I showed you because of what, to show you the importance of this water molecule now. I'll return it back. If you want to show 2D diagram, that is also feasible. Select 2D diagram. You'll get automatically 2D diagram. Anyhow, in the final interaction analysis, I will try to show you these results. Close this. And then uh, select the molecule. Water molecules, everything put together. Select the molecule if you want to change the display style. Select the display style, protein, solid ribbon. If you want to put it in another shape, uh, like in a rainbow color, apply, okay. So it looks a little bit better. And you want to make it in the publication quality, visualization, you can select the publication quality. Automatically, you can export this in publication quality. So this option is also available here. Let's move on. Prepare your protein. So why you need to prepare a protein? I'm saying that. Change this place type to line. Apply. Protein of. Apply. Okay. So all we can see here is in a, let me change this place style also. Just for representation, I'm showing here. Background image. Color. Okay, let me put the back. Play. Okay. So this gray indicates a carbon and then you know, red indicates oxygen and N nitrogen in a uh, blue in color. And uh, there is a yellow in colors for sulfur. There is a one more person is missing here. So if you have this, one person is missing here, very important one. So when you do for an extra crystallography, for extra crystallography, that person cannot be captured. So it is nothing but the hydrogens. When I try to prepare this one, automatically the hydrogens also will be prepared and be added to your systems. Go to macromolecules. Now go to the prepared, like prepare protein. Prepare proteins. I don't say any looping data, but if you want to still keep it as a default, you can keep it as a default. All the options are keeping as such. But here, one thing you have to keep in mind when you want to keep glycans true, you can have to keep true. What true means you have to keep selected water molecules true. Okay, then. Okay. And if you want to see details, it is showing you the details of our name. Moving from first cleaning of your molecules and identifying the SAR. And then cleaning, looking for a non specific atoms being satisfied or not, all the process it will try to do. And finally, we move on to the protonation states. Yeah, let's move on. Quickly, calculation is doing. Prepare. Now we get the prepare. Can you see the differentiation between this is a prepared protein, this is a non prepared protein? You never see hydrogen or proper valencies in this protein. Yes, our protein will be totally satisfied. So you'll get all the information. Again, you'll get an bond like on. I think if the water molecule is not here, you can select those water molecules, copy, you can paste it here. Make it as a group, select, and you can put it to there and make it as a group. So all the water molecules also will be retained. Now the protein preparation is done. My next step is to identify the binding site. It's a very important one. Identify the binding site. How do I do that? 
go to the certain lifetime interactions, define your erythrocyte, define your receptor. So I told you that there are three ways of defining your binding site. One is by means of receptor cavities. So where it will try to apply the EDZ algorithm and then uh, uh, flood filling algorithm to identify the binding site. Second, by means of the PDP site records, where you get an active site, even you get a catalytic trial. This is a catalytic trial. So two different things. Now, I'm not interested in two of these things. Let me tell you this. In case I want any current selection, maybe I could use it for in a, some amino acid residues, like fan 6 lysolosine, or like this. If I want to select these amino acids, from there, I want to define a site that is also feasible. I have to select this amino acid by using a control option, use a current selection. So this way also, I can able to select my receptor site, binding site. So these are three different ways. One is another by means of bound icon. So this is a bound icon. From there also, I can do current selection. So these are the different methods where you can define your binding set and you can go to go for a document. So I'm deleting the bound icon. I'm keeping the other things as such. And you want to see this, you see here, okay. This is a receptor bound with a bound with an uh, defined with a uh, binding site. Now it is ready for docking. Now I'll be taking a prepared light guns. Click here to view results. View control H. To select all the one. Not if you not select also not an issue. Now we have your bound light gun. Uh, sorry, no prepared molecular state, prepared light gun state. It is a more important for has to select the which docking algorithm that we are going to work on. So if you open the discovery studio, I forgot to tell that we are having a receptor like on interactions. Under receptor like on interaction, we have a various tools for doing a docking, C docker, gold, the lip dock, pharmacopoe resting based docking is also available. Flexible docking, and if you want to do fragment based, you know what drug designing and uh, want to develop or include a fragment based drug designing that is also there. And finally, a scoring and analysis, binding energy scan, so a scoring and scoring like on process. Now, what do we are going to select? Let me select and run parallelly the two different algorithms, lip dock. And once we select the lip dock, it's a hot pot based docking. The sucker will be automatically selected and input like answer. ADM it is screen all. And the rest of the options I'm keeping as such. This protocol has been rolled up in a such a way that it will try to identify the many confirmations of your ligands. They handle the various options, fast, best, teaser, and none. And if you want to reduce the threshold to be in upper threshold of 10, you can take the molecules even upper threshold of 10. If not, if you're not sure about it, your molecule will take only 50 confirmations. How do we know that your molecule will take a 10 confirmation, 20 confirmations. We are having a tools and the small molecules in the confirmation. Let me select and show you for one molecule, generate confirmations. Um, ADMT visible. Let me select one molecule, visible. And then you will run. So that shows how many confirmations randomly it will take. So it's see here, it will take only 10 confirmations. So when you want to optimize this particular options, rather than working for 255 confirmations, you can check your molecules, how much confirmations it will take. You can set even those options here that is feasible. So how do you perform that? Under confirmations, generate the confirmation that will give you idea of your molecule confirmations. Then you can optimize your protocol. Maybe I could say the 50 confirmations. I'm keeping in a maximum of 50 confirmations and other options I'm keeping as such. The document preferences, we are having a high preferences, fast search, fast surface area, user specified. But I'm going for a fast, high quality based document. Other options I'm keeping as such, automatically a site will be taken care and then we will run. Same protocol, I'm, I can do it even with a C docker. Double click and open the C docker. I can record the results. C Docker, input your receptor, 
one more DW and then visible molecules and then I'm choosing a top kids, random clusters I'm keeping and you can have an orientation to define simulation handling. It's a very important of step of this particular protocol. And an advanced option, you can see your charms along with the grid extension and the random seeding. So all these options are kept as such and I'm keeping all molecules and then here. So 558 poses, it's not feasible for me to go ahead to do it manually. So what I will do, I'll double click and open the results. So first let us interpret the results and then I will go for an, uh, how to analyze these results. So first click here to view results. This is a doc icon that you get. How many compounds it's doc that results you will be getting here. And then you get the hotspots, hotspots for your binding site. Okay, you can give control H. You can you can take even your icons. So let me select one icon and show you where it is binding in the hotspot. Give control C and paste it here. You can see your where in the active site your icon is going and binding. So by opening a hotspot and taking a set of icons, you can able to visualize it. Even you can select the multiple icons also. Give control C. Hotspot is it here. So you can select see here where it is binding different confirmations. See one confirmation is out of box. So where it will going and binding there. So like this, you can able to predict by means of hotspot space binding. And you will get in a log log file how where it is started, how much it started where what is the protein you have given what is the uh, expected value and then sigma value all the systems you'll be getting here i'm closing this and you'll get a libdoc file when it started what will be a run for this your results and finally click here to view results i'm closing this input closing this Closing this, I'll get the results like this. Every time I told you right, because Scarlet Studio will try to save your results and copy and save your protocol and run the results. So try to remove the visibility log. Always a lib doc energy value must be in higher values. You have to score your results based on scoring function nature. Higher the lib doc score, best the results are. Double click, when it's sorted out, it will be very easy to get the results. Go to see for which molecule, a for this molecule, you can select this molecule and you can see the receptor like on interactions. Receptor like on interaction, give interaction, define the like on, like on interactions. Okay. Similarly, if you want to push down, you can just move like this. You no need to work out for it one by one. You can just keep smooth on like this. And just keep moving on the molecule like this. You get a results. So similarly, this is all for one contribution of one molecule. So now if you want to select other molecule to analyze, define it. See the like interactions. You want to see it in 2D diagram, it's feasible. Select a 2D diagram, and you can see here it is also having interaction with the water molecule. That's why we are not supposed to relate the water molecule. If you want to see the distance in 2D and 3D, both the way you can see your distance. And if you want to see it whether it's binding with the active site, that is also you can select. You can select the active site to show you what are the active site amino acids, whether it's binding or not. That information also you get it here. Show distances automatically updated in the 3D window. You can see very uh, colorfully what is the distance between them. And then, if you want to label the amino acid in 3D, that is also feasible. Uh, there, you'll be selecting interacting receptor atoms. You can select, you can right click, label, add amino acid apply. Okay. So like this also you can be able to analyze or if you want a 2d diagram with interaction that is also feasible right click this space time interactions 
show distances. You get a show distances. Okay. So like this also, you can able to see the results. And if you just want to take it for some other course, you can take it for some other course. The 2D will disappear, but every time you have to select a specific course, you have to select for 2D like that. Only when you just it. See here, unfavorable bump. It should not have an unfavorable bump. That specific confirmation, you are supposed to take it for further analysis. So let us see the uh, we identified which molecule is best, which is having highest score. Now, how do you analyze this? Say for instance, you have more number of molecules, 538 and all, we cannot do it manually. So that's why we'll be introducing a technique called an you know, analyze like forces. Put a protocol. Another protocol, a certain like on interactions, scoring and analysis, analyze like on forces. Analyze like on forces. Interacting residues. If you have a specifically, a can should go and bind only to a specific residues. Means maybe active site one. Okay. You can select it active site, and you can scrutinize your results here itself. Which host of which ligon is going to have intact the active site, and input ligon so no DW all. Okay, analyzing options. Histograms to a map for an hydrophobic and then hydrogen bonding. Advanced options. Other option I'm picking as such. And then doing that. So in the 538 courses, if you try to get only the best courses of the molecule, which is having interacting only with the active site. Yeah, I get the results for all the things. So let's analyze this one and then I move on to the C locker. I think it's going to finish. Okay. I'm trying to close this inputs just to avoid the confusion with the one more DW one two three like that when I'm closing this inputs. See here when I get the results, I got 530 inputs. When I screen with the interacting issues, I got only four not five. Now we click and open. And that shows you about an, uh, only four not post, nine courses are interacting with these kinds of an important residues. And you get a failed icons, which is not interacting. View when you interact with histograms. Get a histogram. Let's say the about the favorable count of your molecule. And there are some unfavorable interactions also happening with your, with your molecule with an, some amino acids. Hydrogen bonding interactions and hydrophobic interaction, other type of interactions. We will get it very interactively for all the counts. Go back and get a frequency data of residues. How much of frequency it is getting interacting for one residues? Get a favorable count. Unnamed 28, 294 times. Water molecule 243 times. 210. Okay, which even height of this molecule. Favorable count. Hydrophobic count. We we'll get it for specific amino acids and specific hydrophobic counts, and then for hydrogen bonding, specific amino acids, and then specific hydrogen bonding counts. You know, water molecules are very, very important pharmacophores. It's still proving once again. And similarly, we we'll get it for our uh, statistical information about the favorable count of the top five residues and top five residues, you know, favorable interaction, hydrophobic interaction, hydrogen bonding interactions. In back heat map for a favorable count. So get a heat map. We get an excellent heat map to interpret your results. So anything interpreting in terms of numerical numbers, it's more easy to interpret in terms of an, uh, an, uh, graphical views. So when I expand it, you will see the element 38. So wherever you see a uh, blue in color, there is no interaction of your molecule in the acid. Whereas in the one they're having an interaction with this molecule and the three and four like that such a way. So if you select these residues, it will be automatically highlighted in your 3D window. See here? So this automatically highlighted in 3D window. Table view, you can able to see what are the residues and confirmation numbers. So like this, you can say sometimes if there's a four, Okay, I can select those specific residues where it happened. 
my select that will be highlighted even so select that is where is it so interactive okay these are the uh, molecules and its interactions so like this i can able to interpret my results and then uh, i can see a favorable count in a heat map along with the my tablet view and predict which conformation is making interactions and all so like this uh, it will be very easy for me to interpret and will be a very interactive we can do it for and about the hydrophobic even hydration bonding and when you click here to view results in case if you have one favorable count you can filter here filter unfavorable sick unfavorable bonding interactions favorable count lip dogs score is there yeah unfavorable filter favorable count unfavorable equals zero okay so even it will help me to identify the unfavorable counts here so only those for 226 poses interpretation is much easier as compared to one of 536 poses and if you want only to take a pose one molecule and this interaction you can still filter pose number equals to one pose number equals one how many poses are there okay first let us take only the post one and interpret the results then we will get the molecules only one post of the molecules best for this so this is how we have to interpret your results and see this interaction same thing i will show you for you to in a c docker where we get a dynamics based results double click and open click here to view result Remove visibility locked, and here the value should be negative value. Move down, yes, sort it out. So fine, everything is shown to be good. Minus fifty two, it's good energy results. For which compound? Same compound which is showing the topest in the lip top. Select the molecule. The satellite on interaction. Define it. View interactions. Even show distances, show to the time. If you want to change this interaction blue, this place time, atom, disk, fun, update, cube, distance, display style, interaction, show distance, uplink. Okay, so this is how we have to interact with results. If you want, don't want to get a next to post. The move down and you can see the interaction results. So, so that's all for this, this session. So we started with the uh, screening of your molecules and from the screening of these molecules, we have taken the some of the lead molecules from the heats we converted into leads after it, so being ADMET properties and top cat and that likeness. From that, we also analyze the binding affinity of this molecule using an, uh, uh, for drug target and chain ATP protease and come to know about whether this molecule is making good interactions and binding energy so no. So we draw the conclusion here. From there, you can, if you want this further proceed, you can go for the molecule dynamic simulation. There you can screen your molecule before going for experimental technique. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was really a very informative session, I guess, especially for those who are into research and doing uh, docking and uh, d drug designing studies. It must, it, is very, very, it must, must be very, very helpful for them at least. Uh, Ma'am, there are certain questions which are in the chat box, if you uh, kindly allow me to ask. Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Dr. Shilpi Chauhan. She wants to know: Are there any tools available in free version for uh, for the discovery software you mentioned? Uh, actually, in the Discover Studio, tools are will be there, but we cannot able to access it. Only the basic tools I told you, right? Defining the binding site, you can do protein report. Uh, oh, sorry. 
protein report you can do all those things are feasible but not for an uh, as i told you all the protocols is not feasible to run in discovery studio okay we have another question from uh, sumita ma'am she wants to know can you suggest just a minute the question has gone above yeah can you suggest the name of a few window 7 compatible online free softwares for molecular docking yes definitely i will do that you have a auto dock auto dock is very good pyrex if you want to do the multiple screening of your molecule pyrex is also very good very have an auto dock cleaner as well as your auto dock can be installed in terms of a patch file and you can use it and uh, you can uh, uh, other things it's not i won't prefer it because auto dock is a very good algorithm genetic uh, algorithm is very good for the screen your molecule so it is free and if you want to do it we can also have an uh, uh, raccoon but it is for virtual screening technique only but most probably you can go for auto dock installation is also very easy you don't right. need to suffer much much about it so sumita ma'am i hope you have noted all those software which ma'am just mentioned we have another question from deva prasad ghosh sir he wants to unmute himself sir you you can unmute yes yes please uh, yeah. ma'am uh, i think i have a question uh, two things i was reading actually i, th- I have many questions actually three actually uh, one yes, first sir. question yeah. is that you have mentioned that at least 10 to 15 and that years that we know t- takes a normal drug from its uh, this uh, discovery state to peak uh, this mm. final market state but mm. right now in covid era we are seeing all the vaccines are uh, beginning to enter the market as a necessity as it is necessary on emergency basis in one year or less than one year yes uh, absolutely so all, so all this all this 10 to 15 years timeline do you not think this is a waste of time actually from the pharma companies and this government or the regulatory authorities and they can yeah. make up the process yeah. for every drug yeah sir because uh, this is a quick quick process now what the people are did across the world they utilize uh, all this computation technique only even for vaccine development also they use immuno informatics tools and softwares and identify the antigen and for the specific antigen they develop the dna based vaccine or subunit based vaccine so they without uh, in future without having computation biology or chemistry we cannot do drug design ma'am and this elegant thing i was asking because uh, nowadays india has become the diabetic capital of india and insulin is also a protein mm-hmm. so can we not design something uh, that has the same binding site of the insulin whatever yes, insulin sir. is binding with the insulin receptor can we not just design a molecule instead of using giving insulin or we can make that oral drug also that will act same as similar to insulin bind with the same insulin receptor and do the things yeah sir i there are some drugs in the market like uh, i think the glyphosate based drugs or i'm not sure about it metformin and then uh, i think uh, rosoflazin platazone Acha, acha. Glycerol, glycerol, all these kinds of drugs are being prepared for this only, directing with an insulin receptor, and some are being in the computer is being used. And for people for who became insulin resistance, for those people only they will give us an injections. For the rest of the people, they are still taking trying to take only the low mg of this particular drugs. I mean, triolab B is one of the generic drugs. It is combination of three different drugs in the markets. and uh, my i think i have finding one other interesting thing in that particular literature that i was thinking about doing something that uh, in uh, uh, this particular new product is there in amul camel milk okay okay in, uh, in camel milk there's insulin like protein is there and in also in ayurveda the mentioning of uh, herbal effects of the beneficial effect of camel milk is there okay good so this good. Nice. this particular protein uh, can it be synthesized using this after hmm. identification so if you have that that is what we call as a biologics sir. this is a small molecule drug designing i showed right there is also other stream is called biologics where you can design the peptide that peptide is something but is going to make you a uh, protein you can take that protein and you can study the same thing instead of making small molecule and then docking it is like a protein protein based docking that is also feasible you can study that okay thank you thank sir you,
yeah thank you uh, yeah one last question ma'am from dr shilpi again uh, what is the price of licensed discovery studio software uh, for a commercial based things i just get my email id to you all okay. you can write it to me and yeah. you can have a discussion with our sales people and then they will give you the all the details about yeah that will be nice if you can share us the your id yes, ma'am ma yeah And and even I share share. Yeah, that, I can uh, see it in the chat box uh, for everybody who who wants to note down. It's uh, Divya dot Shang Mugarajan at the rate Altem dot com. It's written in the chat box also. And uh, there is one more ID which Ma'am has given in the chat box. Enquiry at the rate Altem dot com. So okay. kindly note uh, these IDs for those who are. Uh, Who want to Inter yeah, if inquire you want about to it? Yes. Yes. If you want to procure a book, if you have any information, feel free to reach us. We yes. happy to reach. We have for an academic and teaching licenses. An academic, uh, if you want to have the research work, you can buy a research suit. And if you want to teach only for teaching purposes, we are issuing a thirty users license for the students. And you can take, you can procure any of these bundles or put together. You can buy the bundles. So we any all the informations. If you want about pricing and the details, you can mail it to us. Yeah, and some people will be connecting to you all. Right. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so. Thanks a lot. Uh, I would just uh, like to share my screen. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. so thank you once again ma'am for uh, the session and kindly accept this certificate from our side as a small token thank of gratitude you, yeah thank, we'll be mailing you, so you shortly the certificate thank you thanks again ma'am thank you thank you so much it's my pleasure to be here to meet everyone so yes. please free to reach us and then i think the session will and be we would also love well. if you we'll be having another ftp in march and we would love mm -hmm. that if you again Uh, take one of these sessions so let the other people also be benefited from this definitely ma'am i will take the pleasure and then i will very happy to engage with you thank you that will be our honors ma'am thank you so much ma'am thank you so much bye bye